Hey, hello, welcome to my channel. Tonight, I'm going to do some stacking. It is Sunday, I will call this Stacking Sunday. Perhaps I will do this more often. That's the idea at least. So hopefully every week, perhaps. I have lots and lots of unstacked data on my hard drives. So uh, let's see what I did earlier today because I pre-recorded it. It's uh, going to be um, M57, so it's the Ring Nebula. I found some data that I shot with my Edge nine and a quarters inch, which is relatively new to me. I've only used it for six nights now, I believe. And I bought it in end of July. Yeah, you can see my recap of 2023 to see how good or bad, depending how you look at it, 2023 was for me. Okay, without further ado, let's see what the difference is between an Edge HD 8 inch and an Edge HD 9 and a quarter inch. data shot on the 12th of June with the HHD 8 inch and I've got data from September 6th no 7th with the HHD 9 and a quarters it's both 180 seconds of exposure both are without a filter although I think I've used an L Pro filter for the HHD 8 inch which makes it, well, perhaps not a very equal comparison, but yeah. Let's uh, take the flats into Cyril. So these are the flats for the uh, HHT uh, nine and a quarters. And I shot sky flats. I calibrate my flats with a synthetic bias, basically an offset. And when that is done, I can stack them and I will have to use the average stacking with rejection and the multiplicative with scaling option. And then I can go and stack them. So let's see if these stacks, uh, if these flats are indeed properly calibrating the, um, the lights. So I take the light subs from the 7th of September and I'll put those into Cyril and let's name this M57 HHD 9 and a quarters and I can go into the calibration tab I'll untick the bias and I can load a dark for the a master dark for the 180 seconds of exposure I have these stored away here there they are and the stack uh, the flats that I just stacked mm, yep and after the calibration is done I need to debayer the result and let's start the calibration. And here we are done. It looks very green. That's normal. If I click on the, the unlink for the auto stretch, then the green cast is already gone. Okay, this looks okay. Didn't catch all the dust modes, but yeah, I can live with that. Now that we have the stacked file, we can uh, or not to stack now now we have the properly calibrated files so we can go into registration there are a lot of options there but the global star alignment works for me so i can click go register and cyril will find out all the movements that the images the individual subs make compared to one another and it will also 
measure the quality of the uh, individual subs. So in the stacking tab, I can go with additive with st scaling instead of multiplicative. And then I can click the start stacking button. Nice. That dust mode is very visible, but if I look around the ring nebula, it looks okay. Let's not do an auto stretch because it will overstretch the um, what is it? The, the ring nebula itself. It it will just be blown out. But what we can do is do some photometric color cal calibration. So we know that the colors used in the image are properly calibrated. That just takes a few moments in Surreal. Yep, done. Okay, then we go to the data for the HHD8. Um, and I'll just simply um, load everything into Surreal, even though this is more than 20 lights. Uh, I had 20 for the HHD, nine and a quarters, but I will just load them all and then in Surreal make a selection in such a way that only the 20 best images will be used for the stacking process. So let's name this sequence something meaningful to the HHD8 data. Yeah, HHD8 M57. Okay, let's convert those and I go into the calibration tab this time I will use a different flat because this is data shot with a different telescope on a different night different filter blah 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 so let's load the proper flat which should be let's see this data was shot on the uh, 12th of June, is that correct? I think so. So this 11th of June flat should work okay. Yep, and let's debay it before saving indeed. Start the calibration. Here we go. It is done. Oh yeah, I had some issues with dew forming on the glass of the camera. So there's this dark um, let's say halo around the main object. And let's go into registration for this so we know the quality of uh, the images and then we'll only stack the 20 best ones. So registration is almost done. There we go. And let's go into the stacking tab. And if we go and look at image rejection, and I'll reduce the amount of um, percentage, so we'll end up with 20 images stacked. So let's stack those. There we go. And the stacking is done. So we can now go into the photometric color calibration again. I'm also copying loads and loads of files from one drive to another. So my computer is a bit slow. And there we are. Photometric color calibration done. Um, let's see if we can get rid of that dark halo by doing some background extrapolation, extraction, I mean. Yeah, it's a little less. Let's go with that. Um, okay. And now for the fun part, I think we need to uh, go into the histogram transformation and do the transformation manually so we can create something that is a little bit equal to the um, to the stretch that we have for the other telescope. So this is the HHD8. Let's load a, another window for Surreal 
then we'll load the uh, HHD nine and a quarters data in there and also go into the histogram transformation and we'll try to get something similar so we can get to the best comparison. Let's zoom in even further and then do the histogram transformation. Something like this. Let's flip the image in the same way as the HHD8. So we have two similar images, same similar orientation. We can uh, save that off as a TIFF file. And uh, yeah, then we're basically done. That was the stacking of the data. And the end result will show up on the screen now. What I see is that uh, the Hatch HD nine and a quarters data clearly shows more detail. Uh, I can see the central star of M57 a bit better in the Hatch nine and a quarters stack. I can also see the uh, galaxy to the bottom right of the ring nebula a bit better. That's, uh, let me look it up, that's IC1296. I can also see that the stars look a bit worse on the nine and a quarters. And I guess this is due to uh, the collimation. I just simply didn't do any collimation on it yet. Uh, whereas with the eight inch, I did do collimation a few times uh, before this uh, data was shot. I think that perhaps also the usage of the L Pro filter had its effects. Uh, you can see that the color is a little bit different on the HHD8, if I look at the Ring Nebula at least, compared to the nine and a quarters. I think that is the effect of the L Pro. Um, that also might be the reason why, for instance, that IC1296 Galaxy is a little bit less pronounced in the eight inch data. Um, but I think that the stars are a bit tighter due to that as well. All in all, I'm happy with the nine and a quarter inch. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this telescope, I think. And this was Stacking Sunday, so perhaps this kind of video might appear on your timelines more often. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.